that is not finished. It's something that we need to remember. Um, now, I would like to introduce Anita Gurumurthy. Uh, she's executive director of, of IT for Change, an NGO that works at the intersection of ICT and development, combining practice, research, and conscientization for a world that is socially just. Thank you. So the first question is, what has been achieved and what are the key milestones? First, the discursive remit or span of digital rights, I think, has become clearer and acquired some legitimacy. Second, more recently, we've seen shifts that demonstrate a new phase of civil and political rights that move away from cascading protests and rebellions to experiments in deepening democracy through a new public discourse. Here, individual freedoms come together with civic participation for the promotion of the common good in which the internet is centrally implicated. I would like to point to Taiwanese experiments in crowdsourcing legislation and zero government, the Spanish municipalism movement and open source city movements, for instance, right here in Guadalajara. Uh, third, the free software community's contributions Particularly, the Freedom Box project launched in 2010-2011, I think is a critical milestone to reclaim privacy, control over data, and freedom to hold and share opinions. What's evident in these practices not only suggests ideas for the appropriation and use of the internet, but ideas about the internet itself and its radical and emancipatory potential for human rights. What to do to consolidate these achievements? Firstly, we need to look beyond the binary of the offline and online. Violations are in the very real hybrid interstices where embedded and embodied life meet the network. The digitalization of governance, for example, has far-reaching implications for those who don't own any gadgets as they become subjects of a new datafied welfare regime. Second, we need to recalibrate the idea of rights in terms of a different sociality in the digital age. This is about future-proofing everything. David Kay's report talks about how the mechanics of holding opinions have evolved in the digital age, and I would like to submit that the mechanics of everything, all institutions, have evolved in the digital age. What are emerging key issues to address? First, are the ethical political issues arising from the global network data complex? Thanks to the network data complex that rides on and fortifies neoliberal globalization, rights and freedoms in relation to the internet are cast in a zero-sum game. The right to connectivity means loss of privacy. The right to knowledge means an erosion of the public commons. This is ironic, given that the internet paradigm is able to nurture an infinite-sum game. But maybe, as Eben Moglen says, for more freedom, we may need to give up the pursuit of economic value we get out of data, close the pipes to save our societies and save rights. The real problem is that neoliberal globalization is increasingly shaping jurisprudence in a way that at the national and international levels, the rights of transnational corporations are seen as paramount. We need to think of how data governance regimes can promote collective intelligence and real collaboration. The second is the absence of international jurisprudence to interpret the human rights issues arising in the digital age. And third, there is the issue of an emerging development autocracy, that of development datacracy that's pushing the world onto a new colonial path. Um, with connectivity slowing down, half the world is not connected and algorithmic decisions are unlikely to be representative. The loss of sovereignty, and this is my last point, is very high for the poorest countries who simply do not have the capacity to manage their data. The result is a transfer by national governments of citizen data to transnational corporations, and with it, the fiduciary duty of the state to safeguard people's rights and interests. We must bring the power structures to account. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anita.